Hello and welcome to this seventh video in the series of developing web applications with ASP.NET Web Forms 4.5. In this video I would like to demonstrate a feature which is much more associated with another development uh, platform which is ASP.NET MVC and this feature is uh, routing. ASP.NET Routing. ASP.NET Routing first became available with the release of the .NET Framework 3.5 and since ASP.NET MVC was an out-of-band uh, release it was the first to actually implement the web page routing. If you remember however in the first video of this tutorial we said that each of the three fra development frameworks in one ASP.NET that being web forms, web pages and MVC had feature parity. Therefore, if MVC implements routing, so does web forms and so does web pages. So today we're going to see how to implement uh, web page routing in uh, web forms 4.5. And to that we're, uh, and to do that, we're just going to go back to our uh, sample application, um, which I've modified since the last time um, to also include uh, the, ab uh, the ability to edit and insert products. So the first thing I'd like to do is just to open a parenthesis on data binding, on strongly typed data binding, and show the products, uh, the product uh, data binding uh, to insert, update, and delete. So I'm going to do this in Opera because Opera is a browser that supports implementation of HTML5 controls. So let's go to the products listings page. And let's pick one of the products up. And if I click on the edit product, I would like to draw your attention to the way the price and the available units text boxes are rendered. And you can see that these are actually va number fields. And if I click on the up and down arrows, I can actually uh, change the product and the units in stock. And I can also do this by just hovering my mouse over the price text box, for example, and rotating the scroll wheel. Um, and I can do the same, for example, to drop the units in, uh, in stock to something like 12. I've also added a drop-down list to allow the user to switch the uh, category that the product is associated with. So now I can change it from model helicopters to sample new category updated. And I can just click on the update product. And once I do that, you'll see that the units in stock is now 12, the price is now 43, and the category is the new sample category updated. So how did I do this? It's quite easy. Let's go back into the markup. And the first thing to note is that I've used the text mode attribute of the text box control. And I've set its property to number instead of single line or multi-line, like I did in the text uh, description. And this allows the field to be rendered uh, in HTML compatible browsers, HTML5 compatible browsers as a text box with uh, a um, value selector to go up and down to increase or decrease the value. The other thing I've done is that I've added a drop-down list in both the item in both the edit item template and the insert item template. And this drop-down list is bound to an item of type toy category and it has a select method of get categories. And if I look at the get categories method you'll see that it's very impl very easy. I've just copied it over from the categories listings page because all the method does is it issues a call to db.toyCategories and returns the list of toy categories in the, so in the form of an I enumerable of toy categories to the calling control. And the calling control actually binds um, two-way data binds to the uh, category ID of the selected category uh, from the drop-down list and actually sends that back to the product that is being edited or inserted. In today's video what I'd like to show is ASP.NET routing with web forms. So to do that the first thing to do is to go back into the global AJAX file and bring in a new namespace called system.web.routing and this will actually allow us to have access to all of the routing objects that are available. And the next thing I want to do is I want to actually start by defining a couple of routes. So let's go into my code snippet and take in two lines of code to define two new routes. And this is using the route table 
um, object, which is an application level object, which exposes a routes property, which in its term exposes a map page route method, which has uh, five overloads, of which for now we're just going to be using the first one. So the first overload creates a new route, whose name is going to be called categories. The URL for the route is site administration slash categories, and the physical file path is slash site administration categories ASPX. I'm going to be doing the same thing for the products uh, route. So I'm going to be calling, creating a new route called products, and it's going to be pointing to site administration products, and the page it will redirect to is the product page in the site administration folder. So let's run this up in Internet Explorer and see how it looks. So up to now, I had to type in site administration slash categories ASPX, but now what I can do is I can just type slash categories, and this is a much more search engine friendly or SEO friendly URL. The same goes true for products. So I can type in slash products, and I will be taking to the, taken to the products listings page with all of the available products. Now the next thing I would like to do is to add a, a, a more complex route which will redo the URL redirect which is when I click on the new product or new category buttons. So if I click on the new product button you see that I pass in a query line, uh, a query uh, string URL which says command equals new. So let's change this by adding some more routes and using another one of the overloaded uh, map page route methods. So I'm creating two new routes and these two new routes, let's just indent, the first one is going to be called category, is going to be called new category. The route URL is site administration slash category slash new. It's going to be pointing to the category details page. The we are not going to be actually checking if the category details page is ex exists on disk, although for other purposes we might want to do that. And the last parameter that I'm passing in is this new route value dictionary, which is a dictionary of uh, route values, which is equivalent to a query string. So I'm going to be creating a new dictionary, and this dictionary is just going to have one item uh, called command whose value is going to be new. And therefore, for the new product, I'm going to have the same thing, except that the route URL changes to site administration slash product slash new, and the route name is now route new product. Now, in order for this to work, remember that what we did was that in the category details page, I had a an if statement to check if in the query string we had a command parameter and if that parameter had a value of new and if so we change the uh, form view uh, to the insert mode instead of the read only mode. So what I'd like to do is instead of looking for these values in the um, query string passed into the, met into the page, I'm going to be looking for these in the route data dot values collection. So the route data is an object exposed by the page and it has a values collection and if this value collections uh, collection contains an element called command and if this command element has a value of new please go ahead and change the mode of the control to insert and I'm going to be doing the same thing for the product details. So for the product details, now if I change, I need to go all the way up to the um, page load event handler and change this to route data instead of query string. Okay, so now if I run this in Internet Explorer, what is going to happen is if I go into the categories listings, categories, and I say new category, you see that uh, down here it still says command equals new and I still pass the command equals new query string so that breaks my page and no longer allows the control to switch into insert mode. 
So what I need to do is I still need to modify the categories listings page and the products listings page. So to do that, what I need to do is I need to change this hyperlink control into uh, a hyperlink control that actually gets its URL value from the route data. So let, in order to do this, let's just create a new hyperlink control. And you see that what I do is I use a method called get route URL, which will resolve, uh, resolve the URL for the new category route and will not pass in any uh, route parameters because the route parameters are already created by the route um, by using the map uh, page route call with a route value dictionary. So. I'm going to do the same thing for the products. I am going to actually change it from with the product snippet. So here we go. I'm going to just replace this code. With the with a call to get a route URL. And now if I run the website, what you'll be able to see is that if I go to the products listing. So, for example, products, and I hover over the product, add new products, you see that the compiler actually resolved the URL for the route into site administration products new. And if I click on this, I actually go to products slash new, which is a much more URL, uh, SEO friendly URL than the one I had with the query string. Now, the last thing I would want to do is I would want to change the URLs which are passed into the product details view uh, page so that I do not no longer have this ID query string at the end, but rather a SEO friendly optimized URL. So to do that, I'm going to be using another overload of the uh, map page route method. And going back into the global ASACs to add this. So I'm creating two more routes. One is called category details. It points to a site administration categories. And this part is a dynamic parameter called ID. And the fact that it is in uh, between square bracket in, in between brackets tells uh, the routing engine that this is a parameter, and it is actually going to be routing this to uh, site administration dot slash category details, and the second one is going to be going into product detail into product details dot aspx and is going to be of type site administration slash product slash id. To get this to work, what we need to do is we need to also modify the hyperlink controls which are present in the category detail in the categories and in the products page to no longer compose a query string but actually use the get route URL. So if we want to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the control. with a hyperlink and this hyperlink control is going to use the get route URL method once again to resolve the route for the category details route with a new route values dictionary where uh, which contains one item called ID and that ID is going to be coming from the item dot category ID and notice the strong data binding again in use. I'm going to do the same thing for the products. So let's go into the products one. And in the products one, I'm just going to uh, actually copy it from the categories. Um, so here we go, categories, copy this control into the products. So in the products one, what I'd like to do is I'd like to replace this with this. And obviously here, category ID is not an option, but product ID is. 
an option so we're going to be using strongly tied data binding and we're not going to be saying category details as the name of the route but rather product details um, so what this method is doing is it's mapping the URL for the product details route and replacing the ID dynamic parameter at the end of the route with the value returned by the product ID property of the uh, pro of the product object that we've data bound to now the last thing to do to get the sample to work is to actually come back into the product details page and remember that when we were selecting the uh, get product we were actually getting the value from the query string and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting the value from the route data instead and the same holds true for the category details so instead of the query string we're going to say route data and that's all we need to put in place to now have uh, dynamic routes which take in parameters. So if we run the sample and we go to the categories listings page, what you'll see is that now the URLs are category slash one, slash two, slash four, and so on. So if I click on one of these, what happens is that I get a much more friendly op, uh, search engine friendly uh, URL which is slash category slash two and here I can put in slash category slash one to get another category and the same holds true for products so if I go to the products listings page oops the products listings page without the uh, trailing One. There we go. And obviously I have a small error here which we will need to fix because I did not code the route name well. So it's going to be product details. There we go. And now, if I go to the products listings page, I should be able to see the same thing. So, I can also use the route to do so. So, I can go to the products. And then, I can see that I have products 1, 2, and 4. So, if I go and click, I now have site administration slash products slash 2, which actually points to the product details page where I am going to be having my form view control recover the slash 2 parameter from the route data um, where it replaces the ID um, dynamic parameter. Now, last thing that I'd like to show is that if we wanted to modify this, we could go into the product details and say route data um, ID, but if I wanted to change this to something else, I could just say route data dot product ID if I wanted to, um, or if I don't specify any uh, name in here, and just put it like this, it will actually look for a parameter uh, called uh, ID inside the route data directly. But for now, let's leave it as ID to not break the sample. So in the next video, we will be looking at an obtrusive uh, JavaScript validation for the sample we've built so far using ASP.NET Web Forms routing.